All right, tubers, Madam Roy back once again. This is a surprise live stream, so if you guys didn't get a warning about this, um, you'll know why. <laughs> That's right. I was getting a little bored tonight. Um, had a busy, busy day, so I figured I'd give you guys a little bit of a treat. I'm trying to get pretty comfortable in here. I just finished my shower, as you can see by the towel. And we have Mr. Baxter right over here kneading on the bed. What you doing, Bax? What you doing, buddy? Everybody see Mr. Baxter? Boy, he's usually camera shy. If I point to him, it might focus to him a little bit. You happy, Baxter? You, he's actually been a good cat today, believe it or not. He uh, He's usually pretty standoffish. Come here. Come on, Max. Come on. Wish you guys could hear him purr. He is one happy little kitty cat right now. What's you doing? What's you doing? And now you guys see why I don't make my bed, right? Because I actually have a cat on it almost at all times. Either he's on the bed or Milo. And don't think for a minute Milo's not here. He's right down there. Milo? What are you doing? You want to say hi to everybody? They're just being lazy right now. Let me reorientate this camera here. Whoa. I don't know what's going on. I got to tighten this back up. All right, tubers. So, Another thing I want to talk about, other than the two cats, which are doing just fine, because I know somebody's going to ask me that. You guys can see they're doing perfectly fine. I want to give you guys an update on what happened with the uh, Ford Explorer. Uh, most of you guys know that I was looking at a 2007 uh, Ford Explorer XLT Iron Man edition yesterday. Uh, well, unfortunately, that has fallen through. Late last night, um, I actually talked to the gentleman. We actually ironed out a price. I said, let me come down and look at it. If I approve it, um, I'm offering $700. And we talked and he agreed. Well, that was probably around 7 p.m. And about 10 p.m., like literally right before I was ready to go to bed, he uh, sends me a text message and says, um, I'm sorry to text you so late, but I have somebody that offered me uh, a full price offer, in other words, $1,000 for it, uh, sight unseen. And I basically told him just to take it because I wasn't willing to pay that much for the vehicle. I, Especially with a bad um, harmonic balancer, uh, crank sensor pulley, and the uh, adjoining bolt. And I, because of that, I couldn't even see the thing running. So... Unfortunately, um, that did not work out. I actually went and looked at two more cars today. I have the footage in my phone. I'll probably add that into a future vlog. One was a 2005 uh, Ford Taurus, <laughs> which looked great on paper. Had a lot of miles, 180,000 miles, um, but they only wanted like $900 for it. And um, we went there, and it had a little dent in the door, nothing major, and a few little issues. And I'm like, all right, this looks this looks decent. So we go we go to drive it, right? I I put it in gear, I get ready to pull out, and as soon as I step on the gas, the transmission slipped immediately, and it kept saying check trans, check trans. So. Suffice to say, that one did not work out at all. I was kind of bummed because I actually like those cars. I'm really a big fan of the Ford Taurus. I think they're very solidly made vehicles. Um, they don't have high resale values, that's true, but they're still good vehicles. And for that reason, if you're looking for a beater car, that's definitely a great option because in most areas, you can get those for under $1,000. And generally, they're in decent shape. So after that, Dad and I came, came home after we picked up some Chinese food because we were really hungry. We pretty much spent all day long searching for vehicles. Um, I looked on uh, Facebook, and I noticed that somebody was selling a 2002 Dodge Durango. Um, had a few pain issues. They were only asking $1,300 for it, and it only had 120,000 miles, and uh, showed it to Dad. 
he thought it looked like a good deal. So we went over to look at it. It was only a few miles from the house. And it was okay. Um, we took it down the road. The drivetrain was fine. The engine was fine. The transmission was fine. Um, but this was one ugly vehicle. The, uh, the paint was all peeling. It was all faded. Um, the interior was trashed from a bunch of kids. Obviously, they were taking kids around. As soon as I opened it, I noticed uh, one of those little metal kitty spoons fell out. Um, and it also had issues with the blend door and the AC. So I offered the guy $800 for it. He said he, he said he had to think about it, and we left it like that. And once I got home, I really started thinking about it. And I said, you know what? I really don't want to do this because this, this actually has the uh, 5.9 liter V8, the 360 Dodge. And that thing is a gas guzzler. We're talking 11 miles per gallon city, 15, uh, 14 or 15 highway max. And I'm like, no, no, I can't deal with that. So at this point, I'm getting pretty discouraged. We pretty much spent the entire day looking for vehicles. And then, like a beacon of light from above, Dad sees the perfect vehicle. It is a 2002 Lincoln Town car. And when I'm telling you I'm getting my car back, it is exactly like I'm getting my car back. Because a lot of you guys out there probably remember the 1999 Lincoln Town Car, the silver one that I had that I traded in for that van, this is almost identical to that, except this is a 2002. Um, the deal is, and I don't think Dad will mind me telling you this, um, that we're going we're gonna to look at this tomorrow, barring any major problems, as long as this thing is everything that the seller says it is. Uh, we're going to get it for about $1,500, and uh, Dad's going to put in 500 of that, kind of like an early Christmas present, and it's also with a stipulation that he's allowed to drive it when he needs it, and I have no problem with that, and I'll be putting the 1000 in. So it looks like, as of right now, I will be getting a 2002 Lincoln Town Car as my quote-unquote beater car. Does it run? Um, well, we'll find out tomorrow. Uh, yes, as, as, as far as I know, I talked to the gentleman. He says that the it's, it's in great shape. It has 110,000 miles on it, um, and it doesn't need a thing. Now, you guys know how that goes. The used, people selling used cars are always going to tell you it doesn't need anything. It's probably going to need something. The question is whether or not it's going to need something major, and we'll figure that out tomorrow. Tyler, it's good to see you, buddy. What do I think of your car? I actually saw the video of that, your 2005 Mercedes C240. I think that's an awesome vehicle. Uh, let me see what you said. It's a formatic with 230,000 miles. Everything works for 1,500. I drove it 1,000 miles. Now runs great. Got it. A V8 2.0 or V6 2.4. I don't know a lot about Mercedes Benz, but I saw the video you did on that, and I think that was a tremendous deal. I know that the, the Mercedes Benz, um, they can be a little risky because they can be hard, expensive to repair, but I think that year and that, that C240, um, you can get parts for it pretty cheaply from what I understand. <laughs> yes, Flips, May. I know you don't like American cars, but we are sticking with an American car because at the end of the day, Dad, Dad and I can fix it easily. I'm losing my voice, but I did remember to bring the uh, water in. I think it's time for a Baxter Cat update. He's kind of relaxed right now. I wish I could get this thing to stay so we can see both of us. Let me try something here. Yeah, I really can't. I can go like that, maybe. No, not going to work. Oh, well, you guys got your little uh, snapshot of Baxter there. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I, I I I believe it. It's amazing the depreciation of cars. But I tell you, if you can find a good vehicle, even if it's an older one, um, for a good price and the mechanics are good, you have somebody check it out. That's the most important thing. 
if you're not a mechanic and you're not mechanically inclined, like I'm not when it comes to cars, um, when you're going to look for a used car, bring it to a shop. There are shops out there. You pay them $20, $30, $40. They will do a once over on that car and they will tell you if it needs something. And it is worth the peace of mind to do that before you shell out one, two, three, five, ten thousand dollars for a used car, and you have no idea what might be wrong with it. I mean, it might run great, but who knows? Maybe the tie rod ends falling off or something. You never know. <laughs> hey, buddy. Cats are so happy right now. Tyler goes, I went to check the oil on my car. I got it and see it's like a BMW. You need to check it on the dash. LOL, it takes a lot. 7.4 quarts. Yeah, I've heard about that. Um, believe it or not, my um, my 2010 Crush Town Country has a Mercedes-Benz transmission in it, and there is no transmission dipstick in that. I have no way to check that. So I don't know what to do. I'll have to just follow the guidelines in the uh, owner's manual. Hopefully the people that had it before me did the uh, maintenance on that. And um, I'll have to bring it to the dealership because I can't do anything. There's literally just a cap where the transmission fluid dipstick should be. And there's absolutely no way to check it because of the way the tube is angled. You can't even stick anything in there to see what the level is. It actually has to be done at the dealership. I-386, I'm a Chevy, GMC, or Dodge person. I've looked at all of them. I looked at the Dodge, um, what did you say it was? Dodge, <laughs> my mind just went blank, guys. I'm sorry. I just looked at a Dodge today, and um, I was going to look at a Chevy Impala earlier, and um, that one just had too many miles on it. Dakota, thank you. I, I, I'm i sorry. It's late at night. I probably shouldn't have done the live stream, but you know what? figured you guys deserved a little update. Even if it's not a long one, you guys uh, seem to like these live streams. What happened? Oh, somebody was calling the house. And Flips May says that the only American car he'd buy is a Ford. Well, Technically, that's what I am buying. It's a Lincoln, which is part of the Ford Motor Company. And, yes, you guys will definitely get to see this vehicle. I am going to do a review on that, just like I did with my uh, 99 Lincoln Town car. All right, Tyler. I'm glad you stopped by. I really appreciate it. I hope that car lasts you a long time, and I think it probably will. There were some models, i386, there were some models that had transmission troubles. I believe those were the older ones, the nine, some of the earlier 90s town cars. Um, the, the, uh, the ones like I'm looking at, the 02 and the 99, I think used the, like the C6 transmission bulletproof. Proof, the same thing that the, uh, uh, the Ford trucks use. Hired Gun says, I, re I view vehicles as utilitarian tools. If they get you from A to B reliability, all good to me, whether the brand or place of manufacture. That's a great way to think about it. And that's pretty much what this vehicle is going to be. This is going to be a vehicle that when my dad needs to drive a car because all he has is a big truck and he doesn't want to have to drive that all the time, he can drive this. When he's not driving it, I'm going to drive it. And it's something that I'll be able to to use if I decide to go to do if I decide to do Amazon delivery driving um, it's big enough for that the truck you know big enough to where I could put packages in the trunk in the back seat and also it's decent enough on fuel economy to where it'll make sense to actually do the delivery driving interesting flips may says uh, a live review of Lincoln would be interesting you could carry the laptop with the webcam outside. I don't think I'd be able to do that. What I might consider doing is is using my cell phone to do a live review. We might do it. We might do it two ways. We'll have to see what happens there. Excuse me. Oh, I have to take my Theraflu again. You know, I'm actually feeling better. Believe it or not, I had a lot more energy today. It's just when you get towards the end of a cold, all the congestion moves from your chest and your throat into the nose, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. Yeah, nothing worse than 
brand name fanboys. You know, when it comes to vehicles, I, I like them all. Actually, to be honest with you, my least favorite brand of vehicle is Chrysler. I've never been a Mopar person. I know, right? Matt, why do you own a Chrysler Town and Country and you don't like Mopar vehicles? The reason I bought that is it was the best vehicle for what I needed at the time. And I still like it. Don't get me wrong. The, 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 the Chrysler Town and Country is not going anywhere. But um, I'm just not really a Mopar guy. Like old school Mopars, when you talk about like Plymouth, Roadrunners, Satellites, um, Barracuda, they kind of just left me cold. I was always more of a, a Ford Ford guy. Oh, Eric, I'm so glad you didn't buy a Tundra instead of the Chevy. If you talk to my dad, he'd give you 100 reasons why not to buy a Tundra. Now, that being said, I am a huge fan of the Toyota Tacomas. For small trucks, um, other than maybe a Ford Ranger, you really can't beat Tacomas for reliability. But when it comes to full-size, big trucks, you want either a Chevy, a Ford, or a Dodge. Stay away from the Toyota Tundra. Stay away from those big Nissans. The reason is they're not designed for the long haul. They're not designed for heavy, heavy towing. They're just not. And if you guys don't believe me, do the research. There are a lot of people out there that bought Toyota Tundras that use them for hauling and towing long distances. They just don't hold up like the American trucks do. I have heard that the Tundras are not that great on fuel either. I, I, I don't know why. Maybe because they're V8s and, you know, Toyota's not really known for big V8s like that. Stick with American vehicles if you're, um, if you're looking for something really big, like a really big truck. Interesting. Eric Brenner says all cars are built for a price point, but Nissan's are is not really is not really built well. I've heard back and forth on that. It depends on the vehicles. I know that um, the Altimas are really solid vehicles for the most part, especially like the early to mid two thousands ones. Uh, they've had issues with Maximas. I think they had transmission issues uh, back a few years ago. And the Nissan Pathfinders um, had a lot of quality control issues. More fit and finish, I think, than anything else. Look who's trying to go out now. I-386, I could have gotten a new Nissan Frontier for the same price I paid for my 2013 Dodge Ram. But I wanted the Dodge. I'm getting 18 miles per gallon, 445 miles to empty. That's impressive for a truck. That's impressive for any truck. I totally support your choice in getting the Dodge Ram, by the way. <laughs> Seriously. Tom Wilds here. Hey, Tom. I have a Nissan Micra. Mark here in the UK, currently on 170,000 miles. No problems at all. Just keeps going. I've never heard of that. It's probably a UK only vehicle. It's a good amount of miles, though. Really good. Eric Bonhammer says around 2010, a Chinese company bought out about half of Nissan, and that is when the quality went downhill. Their CVD transmissions are garbage. Gee, that kind of reminds me when Fiat bought Chrysler and everything went to you know what in the handbasket. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you an interesting fact. The 2010 Chrysler Town and Countries, the early ones were pre-Fiat uh, buyout. The later ones were post-Fiat buyout. You can tell that because the, the later ones, uh, everything is metric. The oil filters and all the bolts. The earlier ones, it was uh, standard. And guess which one I have? Yeah, that's right. Mine is post. Mine's all metric. So I'm technically driving a Fiat when I tell you I'm driving a Chrysler Town and Country. I don't know. That might not be so hot. <laughs> Renault from France owns so much of Nissan, too. And that I did not know. Uh, fun fact, uh, 
throughout the 80s and very early 90s, Renault did sell vehicles here in the United States. Um, but what wound up happening was they had so many quality control issues that they were basically forced to leave. When I say they were forced to leave, people just weren't buying their cars. I mean, they were really bad when they were here. My uh, my mother uh, drove a 1986 uh, Renault Fuego. And some of you guys may know what that is, especially over in Europe. And it was a fun vehicle to drive. It was a four-cylinder turbocharged engine. Um, that had a lot of power back when when the turbo would work. And I say when the turbo would work because we put three turbos in that vehicle. And each turbo lasted about two months. And at the end, we just said, forget it. We'll just drive it without a turbo. And without a turbo, it basically had like 25 horsepower. And there were other problems with that too. It It would go through alternators, like it would go through a tank of gas. It had starter problems. Don't get me wrong. It was a fun vehicle when it was running, but the problem is you just couldn't keep the darn thing running. <laughs> I like that. Essentially, Renault built cars to be really good until the warranty expires. It seems like a lot of things these days, but yeah, I definitely get your point. Yes, I would love to see the auto uh, factories come back to the USA. A lot of the, believe it or not, a lot of the uh, foreign cars, Hyundais are made here, Hondas are made here, and even some Nissans are made here. Eric Brunheimer said, speaking of fuel economy, his truck is getting 22 to 26 miles per gallon, especially on the highway. It averages around 19.8. That is phenomenal. I, I, I can't get over that. Eric, if you come down here, I want I hope you bring that truck because I want to ride in that. I, 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 it's beautiful, man. I'm so happy for you. I-386, hey, Matt, there was a small two-door car, had three wipers. Most of them were convertibles. I guess maybe you're talking about the, the hatchback ones because sometimes they'll have a wiper on the hatchback and, then, of course, the two front wipers. We have some of those here. Oh, yeah. Check this out. Check this out. Oh, man, they were fighting. My two boys are fighting. They want out. I may have to get up in a minute and let them out. A convertible. Yeah, I never heard of that. Most convertibles don't have rear wipers. Yes, Flips, may I do remember Day Wu. Oh, boy. I got a story for you guys about that. Um, when I worked at Sonic, uh, my manager, there, a really cool guy by the name of John, he, he drove a, at the time, I think it was a 2002 Daewoo Laganza. And he was supposed to come in and open the store one morning. And I was there because I did prep at that point in time. And he was supposed to be there around 7 in the morning. Well, 7 came and went, 7.30, 8 o'clock came and went. And uh, no John. So... <laughs> I call my main manager because I didn't have his number. He was the assistant manager. I say, hey, look, so-and-so uh, isn't here. He's like, okay, let me give him a call. Well, turns out he shows up about 10 a.m. after the main manager came and opened the store with his car. And he said, Matt, come out here and take a look at this. Do you know that he spun a rod? He actually spun a rod, came out of the engine, went through the floor, up through the roof, narrowly missing his temple. That car almost killed him. So and that was just kind of a uh, an interesting story for you guys. Am I saying it was a bad vehicle? Not necessarily. He had it souped up. He had twin turbos on that thing. He just probably pushed the engine too hard. But uh, I just thought you guys would find that story interesting. It was scary, though. I kid you not. It actually came so close that it, it had a, he had a burn mark on his temple right here. And um, I'm not going to give you guys his full name because I don't want you contacting him. But that was very scary. Very scary. 
De Wulanos. Never heard of that one. Stephen Barber says some kitty action. Yeah, Baxter's over here playing with the little mouse on the scratching post. Milo's up near the door. <coughs> wow. See if you can hear it. He's scratching his scratching post. This cat has massive bobcat style claws. Let's see if I can do it. You guys see him over there? Go on, bud. You guys want some catitude? How the guys? How's backs? Go come and say hi. Good boy, Baxt. That's about all you guys are going to be able to see a Baxter. Unfortunately, uh, he's still pretty camera shy. Tom Wild said, how's business, Matt? Um, business is doing okay. A little slow right now. Sorry about that. I had to report somebody. Um, if you guys, if you guys think you're going to put some nasty comments in this comment section, forget it. You guys are going to be reported. But I know most of you guys are good. I don't know if anybody saw that comment or not. But oh, I'm sorry. Getting back to uh, business. Um, a little slow at the moment. Um, I still have about 15 of those computers ready to go. Those Dell Precision T3500s. They were over here in the corner. I've since moved them into the closet, uh, mainly because it was like the leaning tower of Dells, and I was afraid they were going to fall down. And, uh, yeah, everything's doing all right. Again, just it's the time of year. I have to wait probably till close to Christmas. People are going to be ready to buy a lot of computers. Hey, knock it. Hey, they're really fighting with each other. Milo's got Baxter in a headlock. Baxter's coming with his paw, kind of going like this. I wish you guys could see this. I don't think I have the, the space to do it, but we'll see. There you go. This is how they play. I just have to make sure they don't get too rough. They're okay so far, but I should make sure because I'm afraid sometimes Milo will actually try to take a bite out of Baxter's back. All right. There's enough of your cat fighting for right now. Little uh, wrestling action here on my YouTube channel. Interesting. Yeah, I do advertise on websites. I don't know if I want to do it in the phone book because um, I don't have a shop or anything like that. Being that I'm doing it out of the house, they may take umbrage to that. So we'll see. WWE cat style, yeah. These two, uh, if they're if they're playing like that, believe it or not, that's just what they call play fighting, and that's perfectly fine. But there are times that they can get really, really rough with each other, and that's when I have to put a stop to it. Generally, they're pretty good, though. All right, tubers. Let's see what else we got here. Ooh. Let me let these guys out. They're, they want to get out. Hang on a sec. I'll be right back. All right. Come on, boys. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. They were really fighting and uh, didn't want anybody to hurt each other here. 
Hey, Matt, that was an MGB car made by BMC. We do have MGBs. Um, unfortunately, I probably still couldn't fit in one. They're actually pretty darn small, believe it or not. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very similar to what we have here. Where ours are MGs. <laughs> oh, excuse me. What I do for you guys, I'm telling you, even when I'm sick, I'm out here uh, putting out content. Clips May says, recently upgraded to Dell 3330 with Windows 7 Pro to Windows 10 Pro. Yeah, that's what you really got to do now, unfortunately. Microsoft's pushing Windows 10, which some people like, like I do, some don't. But regardless, that's a smart thing to do. You guys hear that? He makes the weirdest sounds sometimes, both these cats. Like, oh, 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 oh. Now he's rubbing his butt on the carpet. <laughs> I tell you, cats are funny creatures. They can entertain you for many, many hours. Thank you. Bless George Blakely says, bless you, Matt. Thank you. Yeah, I I don't know why people say Windows 10 is is unstable. I agree with you, um, Stephen Barber. Windows 10 is very stable. I've been running Windows 10 on my Dell XPS 8700 pretty much since the first or second preview came out, and I am still running that original installation, which is almost two years old now, and it's stable as can be. There was a couple issues I had with drivers for a while, but I got that resolved. And I have not reloaded Windows on this for at least two years. Man, that's crazy. All right, tubers, I am going to end it here. I am not feeling good again. I need to go and uh, take some more Theraflu. I will keep you guys updated on the uh, car that we get if we do get it tomorrow. Please continue to like and subscribe. Definitely consider consider donating to the channel. Again, that's going to go to improving the content here, making uh, better content for you guys, giving me the ability to drive more places and uh, hopefully see some interesting sites. Please continue to like and subscribe. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody.